you had asked roughly, I think it was a month or so ago, a little bit more, you had said that the Lord had put it in your heart to be baptized again, and that God was doing kind of a new thing in you, that there was something that was welling up within you. And um, if you have just a minute, I'd love for you to share in the midst of this assembly, you know, what the Lord is doing, because there, there's, I just hear the Lord saying that there's higher ground for you and higher ground for your husband. And there's higher ground he's calling you to. So it doesn't surprise me that something is stirring, because when John Muir, Muir Beach, north of Sacramento, north of San Francisco, <laughs> He says, I hear the mountains calling, and I must go. And when higher ground calls your name, the place where you're currently at seems to dissatisfy. It doesn't, the, the drink doesn't quench your thirst. The, the meal doesn't quite satisfy. And some people, oh, I'm just unhappy or whatever. And sometimes I get crazy and quit and look for another church or whatever. When really the Lord isn't doing that, he's calling you to higher ground. But the only way to get you to leave higher ground is he makes a dissatisfaction of where you're at because you hear higher ground beckoning you to take a, a bigger step. And what does the scripture say? The mountains melt like wax in his presence. So today's a day of joy. And um, I was baptized twice. I, I love it. We'll just, everyone here, just get in. We'll just do it all one time. Uh, what is the Lord doing? And then I'm going to have uh, Pastor Dave as our elder. And I would like your dad and your husband to lay hands on you. Your husband is covering your equal partner, but you're covering, and the man that handed him off to you, the Father's blessing. And as of today forward, I believe that there's a new world opening up to you. It, there's an saying, the world is your oyster. But there is higher ground as the heavens open to you. And I think you were healed for a purpose. You weren't healed, just, you know, Jesus didn't come, I give them church. He says, I've given life. And there is a door of opportunity opening unto you, and there is divine purpose. You were the best on stage today that you have ever oh, been. Thank you. I remember there were times I would call him and say, can she not even tap her foot? <laughs> and now you're dancing and you're declaring and you're prophesying on stage, and I'm like, she's arrived. So share what's on your heart real quick so we can rejoice with you. And then David, who's 11, will help me baptize you. <laughs> he's, 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 he's big for his age. <laughs> so, please. Um, I'm not sure, but something that's stirring. But um, yeah, I honestly, ever since you took over the church, I felt like a movement um, closer to God. And um, I just want to say thank you to all of you guys who prayed for me during my cancer journey. I feel blessed to be a part of this church. Church, my church family. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You are a daughter of the house, and you know we've had to make a couple of this. It's so funny because, you know, the enemy tries to whisper in my ear, and he will say, you know, sometimes driving home, he'll say, no one wants to hear from you. They all hated your sermon. You know, and it's seriously. And then you come in and say something so gracious that the, the loaves and fishes that we try to bring to people on Sunday morning somehow changed your journey and it's very humbling because we're servants of the house we serve you and the couple times we had to make some staffing changes along the way it was very difficult because we look at the team they're sons of the house daughters of the house mm -hmm. and you, you don't separate because they make mistakes or whatever you hang in there as long as you can um, but you the scriptures talk about a daughter of Zion and a handmaiden of the Lord now that's old school some of you can get that. Some of you are like, what's a hand thing? <laughs> it's not someone who milks a cow. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Conrad, would you lay hands upon your, your wife? And sir, would you lay your hands as a father's blessing? Even as Abraham laid his hands and spoke blessing, the anointing from a father to a daughter, from a husband to a wife. These two men have covered you. Father has covered you to the day you walk down the aisle. Who gives this woman who's married to this man covering her? I know God's tongue who walks alongside you on the journey, your equal partner. And on this day, the Lord would say unto you, My daughter, I am calling you to higher ground, for I have indeed healed you for a divine purpose. And you will be laying your hands to a plow. You will begin to speak cancer and see it shrivel up. You 
you will speak healing to those. You will speak restoration to those that are weary. You will speak strength to someone who knows what it is to struggle, to know what it is to get the phone call and to have fear. And yet I, the Lord God, have reminded you that I have not given you fear, but I have given you strength. To those that have been so terribly hurt, you will speak words of healing. You have been faithful in the house, and now higher ground calls your name. And I hear deeper waters, I hear the depth of the ocean calling, saying, come forth. For you're going places that you've not yet dreamed of. You're not thinking big enough, says the Lord your God. Begin to dream bigger. For does not my word say unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we ask or imagine? Start asking for bigger things. Take the hand of your husband and begin to ask for bigger things. And I even hear the Lord saying there's things you've cried out for in the evening hours when the doors are shut, the windows are closed, no one is hearing but you and your husband. The things that you have asked for, and the Lord would say unto you this day, I have heard the cries of your heart, woman of God. Let not your heart be troubled, because I'm going to answer the prayers from your heart. I'm going to give you what you desire. Say what you want from the Lord your God and see if the Lord will not bless and rise up and meet you at the level of your faith. Do not say if, say when. Ask for what you want the Lord your God to give you and see if he will not do what you have asked because you have put your hands to a plow. You're taking step to higher ground. The Lord is going to touch you and he's going to minister to you and strengthen you in ways you will dance on stage like you've never danced. You will shout, you will prophesy, and you will declare. For you are not just on a journey. You're not halfway through a journey. You're going to higher ground and all that comes with it in the name of Jesus. Pastor Dave is an elder of this house. Pastor Dave, you confirm the words of the prophetic. I do. Dave, would you come over here? As you guys all know, as we've said earlier, Dave is an elder of this house. We submit to his wisdom and leadership, Pastor Dave. Katie, uh, earlier you heard me talking to Ethan about anointing someone's oil. It's uh, something that was done in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. The New Testament is for healing. In the Old Testament, it was commissioned saying, anoint someone to be a king, to be a priest, or be called to do something for God. So today, I anoint you with oil in name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit yes. has commissioned you to anoint you to whatever God has planned for you. He has fantastic plans and purposes for you. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for Katie that we lift her up to you, Lord. You have a calling in her life. You eradicated cancer out of her body. You have destroyed the evils that are surrounding her. And you've protected her through many, many things. Because you do have a purpose for her to carry on a higher uh, purpose, whatever that is, we don't know, but you do, and you're calling her to it. So, Lord, we ask that this body of Christ will support her in anything that you call her to do, that will be there for her. But we know most of all, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, will be there and never forsake her, and will always love her and always lift her up for her higher calling. So, Lord, we thank you for this young lady. And today, uh, she's been a follower of Christ uh, for many, many years, but today she just puts her heart out and lets everybody know, yes, I am a follower of Christ. I love God, and I'm showing the whole world that I still do. And Amen. I know that God has a call for me. I pray these things, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me say one thing, too. It's, uh, God, I just thank you so much for Katie. And uh, God, that you would take um, something that uh, was uh, diseased, God, for her throat, and use it for your glory, God. That you would take something that was weak, God, and make it strong, God, that she can sing, and even today, God, as she just spoke to the church in the middle of uh, miracles, God, and uh, I just, uh, I just pray, God, you would use that more and more, God, you'd strengthen her voice, use it to talk to people and pray with people, God, and lead uh, people to your throne, God, so we love her, and we thank you so much for today, and we'll celebrate with her, Amen. 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 One last thing, I don't want to belabor the moment, you know, uh, I know some of the things you're crying out for. And one of the
of the giftings in me, as Pam knows, I have the gift of hospitality. You come to my house, I can do a hot dog and a pork and bean reduction. Right? <laughs> I have the gift of hospitality, but I also have the gift of the prophetic. I just, I lean in, I, I know what the Lord wants said. It's just one of my giftings. And when I speak the prophetic word over you, the Lord has heard the cry of your heart. And I just want to bear this testimony. How many know Lori Javer? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Lori Javer's husband died. Many, many years, dementia. He lost, there was nothing left in him. You and I, we all get to go home. And there's a spouse in our house, whether we love him or want to choke him at the moment. But we, we, at least we have somebody to go home to. Lori Jaber would go home to a beautiful house, and it would just be him. And my wife and I would just grieve because she would be home all alone for year after year after year. And I was on the 680, 65 interchange where it goes over into the 80. And the Lord told me in my spirit, call Lori Javer. I have a word for her. And I called her and I said, the word of the Lord to you is you've been alone long enough. The Lord says he's bringing you a suddenly begin to prepare yourself. Because what you've been asking for is on the horizon and it's closer than you know. Now, she hung up later. She told me later she thought I was full of hot air. (laughs) Which most people (laughs) know. It was a few weeks after that. She ran into Gary. A few months after that, they're dating, engaged, and I'm marrying them in two weeks. Oh so the God. other day, I reminded her. I said, do you remember when I was driving and I prophesied over you that God was about to bring you your spouse, and you literally said, I'm full of hot air? The word of the Lord to you is that which you have cried out for. He has heard your prayers. And Conrad, it's very important in the days ahead, as you t- hold hands real quick, that that there is a step up the mountain together to higher ground because he's heard you both. The scripture says in Revelation, before the throne of God are golden bowls filled with the prayers of the saints. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we pray and we pray and we pray and the bowl bowl isn't full. But when we pray and seek the Lord and others pray, Mm -hmm. the bowl overflows. Mm -hmm. And there's a prophetic picture of God rising up and says, answer that because the prayers overflow. Mom and Dad, do you bear witness to this? And do you agree? And in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Do you receive that? Mm-hmm. That which you have cried out for. Karen and I put hands for you. Any hands for our prayers? Son, jump in. I'm going to have David join me since he's young and handsome. <laughs> And I'm old and can you get broken easy? I have a question. Not you yet. Oh. Hello, I'm Jeannie. <laughs> well, that's awkward. <laughs> I know, I know he's a Oh, this is so lovely. I don't want to. Oh, just step forward, please. And David on the other side, please. I'm going to ask you to take one hand here. And Katie, you, this is not your first baptism. This is a baptism of rebirth and a baptism into higher ground, right? Mm-hmm. Anything else you want to add? Me either. <laughs> take one step forward, please. Place one hand here and the other hand right here. And I'm going to gently place it over your nose, okay? Okay. Just, you're going to lean back upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you, if you have accepted God's goodness, grace, and mercy, mm-hmm. and you are taking a step into higher ground, this is not your first, this is your second baptism. Be baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Spirit of the living God. A rebirth into a new season and a new chapter of your life after today the same. Press on towards the high calling and watch him answer the prayers of your heart. Could you please stretch your hands? My sister, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Spirit of the living God. Amen. Buried in his likeness and raised to walk in Bless you guys. Finish up your lunch. What a great day. Thank you, everyone. Amen. Thank you. Yeah.